What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. The day has finally come where NADEN and the team released their own native MCP nodes within the NADEN environment. And it might not be exactly what you expect. Ever since I posted this video going over the MCP community node and how to use it, I've gotten questions every week if you can access it in the cloud yet or if it's only through self-hosted versions. And my response has always been the same, that I figured NADEN was going to release their own suite of MCP server nodes within the cloud environment. And that day has come. And it couldn't come at a better time as MCP is literally booming, as everyone is catching on that it actually provides solid use cases for the future and how AI is developing. And this NADEN MCP node is exactly that. So you're literally witnessing history unfold right in front of you with the impact of MCPs in the AI world. In this video, I'm gonna show you three real world use cases for this MCP node. First, I'm gonna show it in a regular chat model where you have your normal chat trigger within N8N as you're probably used to. Next, I'm going to be showing it connected to a real web application built in Firestore where you can chat with your MCP server and update tasks. And lastly, in the most useful for this MCP setup, I'm gonna be showing how to set it up within Claude to enhance your Claude desktop to be able to access any of your N8N workflows, which I think is truly the magic and the enhancement that this MCP offers. So if you're a true OG channel subscriber and watch some of my past videos, you'll know that I recently just built these two AI agents, Pan the Personal Assistant and Ronald the Regenerator to work alongside my Notion database and be my personal assistants. In this video that I'll link here, I built this entire Notion database with a one-shot entry within Claude Desktop using the Notion MCP, which I set up in the video. But essentially those two workflows are going through getting my daily tasks for me, as well as rewriting my tasks whenever I mark one as completed. So if you notice I marked this as completed, I can go back to here and press this workflow and it'll regenerate a new goal for me based on my bigger picture marathon training goal, change the date and change the status back to not started and give me a new subtask. For setting up this native MCP server, I simply just changed each one of these to have a execute sub workflow to be able to connect the MCP server to it. So Pam the personal assistant looks like this, while Ronald the regenerator looks like this now. And I just want to give some context to how the MCP server was actually set up, as some people's videos are a little bit misleading on if there's actually something going on in the back end or it's all just taken away by the MCP server. So to set this up in the chat method, you're going to need your regular AI agent with the regular chat trigger with just a simple prompt saying use the mcp server tool to direct your message and this is the new mcp server client tool so literally just cp client tool and you see whenever you get in there you'll need the server sent event endpoint and then you can also choose to send authentication or select specific tools within that mcp server but you will need the mcp server trigger to be able to use this client tool I'll go delete this and you can see i just have my sse endpoint pasted in there and for this MCP server trigger tool, pretty straightforward it's where you're giving a test and a production URL and you can give an authentication and you're giving a path. And then you can click to copy your MCP URL and paste it back into your MCP tool to be able to call this within an AI agent setting. If you're going to be using it within Claude or Cursor, you don't need this entire part here. You'll just need the MCP server trigger. And for tools to be able to expose the Notion workspaces to this MCP server, I used call sub workflow tools set up as regular with call this tool to get daily tasks or call this tool to regenerate daily tasks to be able to expose it to the MCP endpoint. Now, if you've watched any of the other videos breaking down this MCP tool, you'll notice that the big talk about it is that it's a SSE endpoint. And basically the most important thing to know about that is that that is a one way unidirectional channel to where it's server to client only. And it's not gonna be a two-way communication channel like you can with webhooks or HTTP requests. But to test this out, we can go ahead and chat, hit my daily roles. And the one thing you do notice from using this MCP tool is, especially in this fashion where there's an AI agent on top of it, is that it's pretty slow. And some people might be curious why you don't just put these tools on this AI agent, not use the MCP trigger at all. And very good question. I think the entire use of the MCP tool is the versatility that it gives you on connecting other applications such as Claude or Cursor. And that's the true use of MCP. I just wanted to give some cool examples of implementing them into current workflows and show different use cases so I could give a true review of what I thought about it. So we see that we're done here and it gave me all my daily goals back and links to the reviews. So that's actually pretty good. Now jumping into this use case, this is, this is very important remembering what I said that it's a one-way 
unidirectional server client MCP server at the moment with the SSE kind of setup. Think of SSE as a radio broadcast. The server in our case is the DJ and the client is the listener. So for example, if you hook this up to Claude, the MCP server trigger would be the DJ and Claude would be the listener. So to get around this, HTTP request webhooks are the only way to be able to send data back and forth. Now, while this won't be a full in-depth guide over Firebase Studio, this is simply just a simple application that is sending and receiving information via webhook once you submit any text in this text box. I will likely be going over Firebase Studio more in depth in the future. So if you're interested in that, make sure you subscribe to stay tuned for that. For this video, this is a very similar setup to this guy Bart's video, which I'm not going to say his last name because I'll butcher it, but he does a great job going through it and I'll link his video down below. And just some quick reviews for Firebase Studio. If you're staying in the studio and not using Gemini 2.5 in it, it is kind of like talking like a brick wall. So I would highly suggest you going into the editor and switching over to Gemini 2.5. But for us, we can type in here just as we would into our regular AI agent chatbot. What are my daily goals and submit and using this MCP tool, like I said, it is quite slower than just setting this up with a regular AI agent. But don't knock the MCP for that, as this is not exactly what it was designed for, and it's not the best setup to really show its strengths. So you see, I get my goals back here. Obviously, they're not structured the prettiest visually, but that's a very easy fix. The hardest part is sending data back and forth in a structured way. And I just wanted to show another use case and how to set things up. So jumping back here, you can see that I just have test workflow, but this is simply just path as goals. And the response, it is default set to immediately. You'll need to change this using respond to webhook node. And you'll see that that's at the very end. The AI agent is the exact same as the chat agent with the only caveat being the user prompt message is changed to JSON body dot goal rather than chat input. And you'll get that whenever you're testing out your connection to your application, you can send data to this workflow and capture it. And everything else with the MCP trigger is set up the exact same as with the chat agent. And the only thing that changes is instead of sending it to the chat window, we are now having an extra step here, which is respond to webhook, which is taking this goals in the response here, sending it back with JSON back to our application that's built in Firebase Studio. So you'll just copy however your response is and say, this is how the webhook will be responding. And it should be able to make a few changes. I did have a few iterations that it took to be able to get this done, but ultimately it was pretty easy. And now for the best use case, in my opinion, for this MCP server is the versatility in connecting things like Claude or Cursor to it to be able to have even more use cases for your actual workflows and agents that you build. So it will bypass this old faithful and go straight to your MCP server trigger. So to be able to do this, obviously you'll need Claude desktop as a prerequisite. And you'll go into your Claude JSON config file, which if you haven't done it before, you go into settings, go into your developer settings, and you'll see that I already have a few already installed, but you'll go to the edit config and that will get you to your config file. And you can open this with any text editor that you want. I'm gonna open up the cursor. And here's what my config file looks like. Yours might be blank. You might have more or less, but in order to get this to work, you'll have a similar setup to this. So I'm going to go into my Google database and here is the command that you'll want to paste into your config file. And you'll just add your SSE in here, let's do production, copy that. And I'm doing the production one because I have this switch to active. I'll paste in there and I'll copy this entire thing. Open my config file back up in cursor. Chat, please add this MCP server and paste that in there. Let's go ahead and mix up. And you see you have extra arguments for the SSE here. And exit, and you will need to close and reopen your Claude desktop for the changes to be in effect. And I'll reopen it. And you see that I have five. I can click into that. And you can see get daily tasks and regenerate tasks are the two tools that I have within my MCP server. So if I go back to N8N, you can see get daily tasks. And this tool is actually called regenerate tasks. So I can go to Claude and say, what are my daily tasks use the get daily task mcp and i can send that allow for this chat and you'll see that it's running get daily tasks from in in we'll give it a second and you'll see that it's starting to structure all these tasks that i have out and it's structuring them very nicely 
So I think this is the actual real use case and the real additive that this MCP server gives you is that you can talk with it back and forth and expose your NADN workflows to another tool within Claude or Cursor as a true MCP server. And it makes your workflows just that much more powerful. We could also go back to our Notion database, change this to completed, and see if Claude is able to regenerate that goal. You know, to regenerate my daily tasks. Use the regenerate task. MCP can't spell, but send it. Allow for this chat. And we will see we just regenerated a new goal. It's not started yet. It's set for tomorrow. Perfect. And it also gives me a synopsis here. So guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you really enjoyed it. If you try out the new native MCP servers within NADN, let me know what you think of them in the comments. Let me know what you build. If you want any of the JSON workflow templates, join the community, which will be linked below. Also leave the link to other videos and some more documentation in the description below. So if you got any value from this or want to see more, like, subscribe, and until then, see you next time.